Hey everybody, welcome to a new video from Tonga Pocket Guide. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different as we are on our last few days in Tonga after a month long holiday here. We will recap something that we think people absolutely need to know before visiting Tonga. There's going to be some tips, there's going to be some facts, a bit of mix of everything. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, number one on our list of things to know before arriving in Tonga is to make sure you are up to date with the visa requirements, with the passport requirements for coming, coming to Tonga. Although there's a huge list of countries that can get to Tonga without having to apply for a visitor visa, there are a small number of company, uh, countries sorry, that do require, um, require some paperwork, some entry permit paperwork. And a fee and a fee before arriving in Tonga. So make sure you look into that um, and also be aware that there is a date that your passport needs to be valid for after arriving. Yeah, usually it's about like six months you need to have your passport valid yeah. for, uh, you know, before, uh, as after departure of the country. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it'd be good for you to be able to go inside the country, get inside the country, right? Yeah, make sure your passport's up to date, essentially. <laughs> exactly. All right, so next up we have accommodations. So accommodation is always a really big part of your trip you want to make sure that you are comfortable in between all the activities and especially in a country like Tonga where you're going to be doing a lot of adventurous activities now in Tonga the accommodation options are quite um, widely spread right you're going to have some really really great accommodation and some really 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 low budget accommodation but one of the things that we've really much noticed is that the photos that you see on websites or on uh, on Facebook page are very often not representative at all um, of where you're going to be staying, right? So do make sure that you uh, you do your research. So on Tonga Pocket Guide, for example, every time we talk about an accommodation, well, if we don't mention it, usually you get hot shower. But we also say when you're going to get cold showers. And in fact, sometimes you're going to be staying in accommodation where you're supposed to get hot shower. But if the system is broken, for example, where it is broken for quite a considerable amount of time because they have to source parts from Australia or New Zealand and it doesn't come on the plane, it usually comes on the boat, right? So first up, approach accommodation with an open mind and, and know that you're coming to a country which is less developed in most, in most cases than where you're coming from so be aware of that and second make sure you do your research to pick an accommodation that you think is going to be best suited for you but no matter what in the worst case scenario let's say you're having a bed which is uh, cracking a little bit well you won't spend that much time in your bed there's a lot to explore and let's say you're getting cold shower well it's pretty much fine it's really hot in Tonga so you'll drip dry really quickly after that all right, next up on our tips is to be aware of the local currency. So the currency in Tonga is Tongan Paanga, which um, is its own currency for Tonga. You will need to make sure that you do have cash available when you are traveling around the islands in many, many cases. In fact, in most cases, especially when you're traveling to some of the outer island groups like Hapai and Ewa, um, you, they, a lot of vendors only accept cash, so you will make sh need to make sure that you do have plenty of the local currency available. Um, there are, luckily, there are places um, quite often to exchange currency. Yeah. And so, if you come along with some currency from overseas, you can exchange it. Um, that said, it's going to be extremely expensive if you use anything else than a bank. They charge you, they charge us a 0.5% fee on top of a flat fee. Uh, in like one of the local Western Union currency exchange, number one, something like that. Number one currency, yeah. yeah. So make sure uh, we recommend exchanging your currency at a bank rather yeah. than at a currency currency exchange bureau. Um, yeah. Over an exchange of uh, 850 New Zealand dollars, I made about an extra 75 pangas, which is uh, which is probably about 50 New Zealand dollars extra by exchanging at the bank rather than exchanging um, at the uh, other place. So I did the same kind of exchange, the same amount of currency on both places. That was about a 50 bucks difference. Yeah. And also bearing in mind in the in the few places that do accept credit cards, um, there is usually, uh, you know, a percentage of fee yeah. um, applied to that. That can get quite expensive if you use it a lot. So personally for us, we pay cash for everything while yeah. we're in Tonga. Yeah, we literally just only pay cash. And the country is really safe, so it's okay to carry large amount of cash. I mean, we have for a month 
now we're telling on the internet we are, so maybe it's not smart, but we see a lot of tourists yeah. doing it and uh, we haven't heard of anyone yeah. any problem. As long as you know, you're obviously, you, you know where your cash is, you don't keep it in an yeah. obvious place that people can take it, you, you should be fine. You should be fine. All right, so next up on our list, we have, well, spending your cash. So, um, there's some really interesting kind of pricing happening in Tonga. So, for example, the cheapest car we've ever found to hire was about 70 pangas, uh, which is the local currency here. And yeah, then it goes all the way up to 250 pangas, depending on, you know, if you want like a four-wheel drive, all those kind of things, you, you know it is, it goes, it goes up, right? But um, you can hire drivers for as little as 50 bucks a day. So you may have to pitch in a little bit for petrol, for instance, but still 50 pangas per day for a driver, somebody that will know the place, therefore you don't get lost and you don't waste any time. And yeah, just having a local driver that can also recommend places or, or even um, grab something in the market for you so you don't pay uh, palengi or white people prices, it's always quite handy. So yeah, hiring a driver is actually a fantastic way to explore the islands. Yeah, I totally agree. Exactly. All right, next up, uh, we have a travel tip that is pretty generic, um, but it's always, always good to know is that Tonga operates on its own uh, time zone called Tonga time. Not to be confused with its relaxed pace of life, which we will go about, uh, we will talk about a bit later in the video. Um, but yeah, it's on its own uh, own time zone, so be aware that that's uh, UTC plus 13. Yeah. Um, so it's different than New Zealand and Australia. We actually, the reason we're saying that we've seen people getting confused here and say, oh yeah, no, it's that. It's, no, no, and it just changed the time on your watch. But they, they thought it was the same time zone. Yeah. And if you're coming from further afield, be aware that that might be, if you're coming from the US, it might be a different day that you're booking something from overseas to what's available in Tonga. So be sure that, you know, they, they may be on a different time to the Title, sorry, a different day to the day that you're currently on in yeah. your own country. All right, so it's semi-related to time, but not really. But we're going to try to do a transition. Speaking of time, food takes time in you in Tonga. So, um, yeah, if you go to a restaurant and you're planning on ordering a quick lunch, just know that you're there for an hour and a half, uh, sometimes two hours. Um, once you order the food, it will take a while um, for them to prepare it. Uh, first up, because they are just moving more at a relaxed pace, but also because in most cases, the, the, the places that you're going to go to are extremely short-staffed. Um, I feel like in the country, it's not as customary to hire more help to kind of like deal with, um, you know, with busy times. It's just customary to tell people it will take longer. So don't go to the restaurant when you're hungry go to the restaurant when it's the right time for you to eat and, and then by the time you get food time. yeah when you get the food uh, served you're probably going to be hungry and as Laura said when you got plenty of time as well don't expect to be able to rock in the restaurant within about half an hour being served have it and then be back to uh, going to a tour like you know an hour later um, do plan some time that said um, good things take time so there's some pretty good food uh, to try in Tonga. yeah if you are in a rush there are usually plenty of takeaway or roadside options yeah like fried chicken they call it kentucky here <laughs> yeah so um in tonga tapu especially you'll have roadside stalls where they make local food like local tongan dishes and they you can usually see them wrapped in tin foil like in a sort of peaked bag um, yeah. which is very iconic in Tonga so you can try some local food really quickly out on the go so there's plenty of opportunity for that so you mean those food stalls on the side of the road they're not selling um, conspiracy theorist hats <laughs> no no okay so that's, no, that's food. food in there yeah there you go. <laughs> all right next up Laura next up um, Tonga is a tropical country it has a tropical climate so therefore you will need to pack your wardrobe for Tonga accordingly, making sure that you have, um, you know, nice airy, breezy clothes, um, you know, stuff that you would usually pack for nice, hot, tropical holiday. But this also tropical means that it can rain at any time. So don't be too disappointed if, you know, you get a rainy day. Don't be too disappointed if your, um, maybe your whale swim or your boat tour or your flight is cancelled due to high winds or, you know, high swell, that sort of thing. The weather is ever changing in Tonga and it can change day in, day out. So yeah, be aware that uh, the weather dictates quite a lot in Tonga, but make sure that you're prepared for it with appropriate clothing. Yes, and by appropriate clothing, we also mean respectful clothing. So Tonga is an extremely religious country and uh, 
you know, um, showing too much of your legs as a lady, for example, is not appropriate in Tonga. No matter what your beliefs are, if you visit a country which is not yours, you have to respect theirs, right? Uh, you don't come to a country to impose your own beliefs. It's not colonization time anymore. So just do be aware of that and uh, and respect the same thing for guys, right? If you are able to get yourself a rashes, so like a t-shirt in which you can swim with, it is uh, usually advised over uh, going bare chest when yeah. it comes down to swimming or going to the beach. Yeah, and it really is important yeah. in Tonga. Like they are, their their Christian culture is very strict, and they are they are genuinely offended when people yeah. are wearing really 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 short skirts or or, or short shorts and if you know you're just walking around in a shirt and nothing else or for guys it's i th i believe it's actually illegal to go around with your top off out in public yes you can yeah. so you cannot do that you can go in the water it's accepted but not uh walking around yeah, town so too happy yeah. yeah so really take that seriously in tonga yeah. um it's it's not just one of those things that people say it really does apply here in tonga yeah so speaking about that so my next point is the fact that you need to be open-minded right so i'm not necessarily a religious kind of guy but i really respect the the fact that they're religious here and they are behaving in different ways so approach everything with an open mind and not with an imposing mind of like I expect things to be like a like a home right we were talking about the accommodation we were talking about the food you know everything is working slightly differently here um, sometimes you will you know encounter some people that will ask you things which are you may not be expecting like for example when you check in for your flight you have to weigh yourself for domestic flights right some ladies get offended by that well it's just that we in Tonga we're using slightly different and lighter kind of plane so they need to balance weights on both sides of the plane so it depends on how much weight they want to pedal on one side and the other so it is quite a different country it's going to be a different experience um, it's going to be a great experience because I believe that different experiences are usually best but yeah approach everything with an open mind now we're getting the weight from the boat we had yeah uh, you know um, sometimes you're gonna have at night you know you stay in an accommodation and you bought yourself a few cookies and then you hear rustling at night well guess what it's a rat trap to get into your cookie bags right so what you do is that you're packing the you packing it and putting it in the fridge for example there's no need to go complain over that they can't really eradicate all the rats from the whole uh, from the whole country just for you it does happen it is absolutely okay and i promise if you have an open mind it won't ruin your holiday your holiday absolutely. Next up, there is, uh, to be aware, there is a cyclone season here in Tonga, which runs from November to April every year. Um, yeah, so, but but just because there is a cyclone season doesn't genu generally mean that you're in danger the whole time. It's, uh, it's usually cyclones happen maybe once or twice a year yeah. um, in the South Pacific. Whether they affect Tonga or not is not always the case. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So it's not usually a reason not to visit Tonga during those times. In fact, during those times is when Tonga is at its quietest. So if you want to sort of experience the country to yourself, it's usually a great time to visit. Yep. Also, the weather is actually quite nice and warm during those times. Yep. So some people actually complain, especially if they're in Tonga Tapu during the dry season, during the whale season, it can sometimes get a tad bit chilly. Yeah, people that complain is... it's cold in Tonga, which is blowing my mind. Yeah. But if you do experience, you know, you do get the chills quite often and you are, you do prefer like the hotter, the better, then definitely um, between November and April is when you'll experience that. Indeed. All right, so next up on the list, we have connecting flights. So the airline here is called Lulutai Airline for now, it may change, uh, who knows? Um, and so, yeah, uh, connecting flights, uh, yeah, you can't really book a flight like super close together. Um, you've got to know that flights change quite often. In fact, we've been here for a month and our flight has been rescheduled twice out of the four flights we've taken. So. We have a 50-50 ratio right here, so don't plan things too close together. In fact, we usually recommend, uh, especially for your international flights, so like going back out, right? Um, back out of the country, we recommend you booking your domestic flight a day before. So let's say you're about to fly out on a Tuesday uh, back to, let's say, New Zealand or Australia or the US. Um, make sure that you have you are back on Tonga Tapu on the Monday, right? Um, just just in case of cancellation, there are some 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 major issues with wind in Tonga. Like you can see how windy it is right now. Yeah. While well, you have a tiny little plane, sometimes they have to turn back and go back to their destination. It happens, right? And so for this reason, um, you don't want to be stranded in Tonga. I mean, it's not a bad thing to have a 
Do you have an extra holiday? Yeah. Well, I, I don't think that's that bad. Neither do I. Indeed. <laughs> uh, and also do be aware that the carry-on luggage, uh, luggage is although sometimes they're a little flexible with it, it's 5 kg, right? So your airline coming from back home may give you 7 kg. Don't pack your bag full throttle to 7 kg because, well, it's only 5 kg um, uh, for the carry-on bag in a Lulutai airline. All right, next up is to respect the local customs. So we've touched on a little bit of this uh, already, but that extends to quite a lot of things. So when you're coming to Tonga, um, the Tong Tongan people have, uh, you know, they have traditions, they have uh, quite a religious mindset as well. And that dictates also what you can and cannot do in Tonga. For instance, on a Sunday, things work very differently here you'll find that um, there are no tour operators operating. You'll find that barely any shops are open. Some restaurants are open, so you have to kind of know which restaurants, which we will list on. We list on the website. Yeah, we we put like on... what to do on the Sunday and we list it. Exactly. So on Tonga Pocket Guide, you'll see which restaurants are open, but just bear in mind that most are closed. And that may change. I feel like this is the day when they change their mind the most often. When something is supposed to be open, they're like, I ah, know I'm closed. And that's yeah, happened more on Sunday than other days. Yes. And then on top of that, um, it's actually... Uh, discouraged to go to some of the uh, the local sightseeing sites, yep. especially on the islands of Bavao. Um, you know, going to the beach and that sort of thing is... is... Sort of polite, it's not just discouraged, it's illegal and the police is patrolling. Yes. So <laughs> you will be fined. Yes, okay, yeah. Maybe I was down, downplaying yeah. that a little just bit. Just putting it out there. Yeah, uh, yeah. generally going to the beach um, is not really, you know, it's not really advised. Going swimming, that sort of thing. It's usually like, you know, Sunday is seen as a day of rest, going to church. So your options of things to do are quite limited. But if you're staying in a resort, or like a bit, you know, a holiday accommodation. That's usually where you can do more things. And you can usually go swimming with just outside of the resort. But if you are swimming elsewhere, then it may be the case. And we have heard that there has been police boat patrolling, making sure that people are yeah. swimming out outside of those sort of holiday areas. So yeah, bear that in mind. It's very different on a Sunday. Just relax yeah. on a Sunday. Just relax. And yeah, like we've already talked about, clothing is important as yeah. well. Especially on Sundays. All right, so next up on our list, we have the fact that, well, you may uh, plan, you may be planning to travel to Tonga because you heard about the whales, but Tonga has much, much more to offer about the whales. And in fact, I would argue that the whales are not the best thing to do in Tonga at all. Um, Tonga is thriving with amazing culture. If you happen to be on Tonga Tapu, there is beautiful sites such as the Ahamonga, as well as uh, a great tour with ancient Tonga that will go through uh, the local cultures and the local craft. It's phenomenal and world class. Um, there is also blowholes and and an epic other uh, uh, land attraction to see on Tonga Tapu. If you happen to go to Eua, uh, well, it is home to a very rare parrot that you actually are able to see when you walk around the forest. We did see it ourselves which is really great there is also wide horses over cliff tops and other uh, other epic land formations beautifully huge ovava trees as well it's really cool if you happen to go to Hapai, you have some of the most pristine beaches and great great coral uh, snorkeling places that you will find and it's also um, one of the best places in the world to do kite surfing so if you want to try your hand at that it's pretty cool too um, and if you happen to be right here in Vapa where we show sh shooting this video sorry uh, there is amazing landside there is a fantastic uh, botan botanical garden tour where um, uh, it's it's an old local guy that just loves his garden and it's just it's just really really fun but uh, yeah there is amazing beach snorkeling beach hopping look out look out um, cliff tops all those kind of things so there is really a lot to do in Tonga and and because it's so busy during the whale season which is can you give us the month around between Catch up, yeah. July and October yeah so between July and October because it's so busy with the with the with the whale season honestly it feels overcrowded and it's less good of an experience so outside those times of the year Tonga is Experience amazing the real Tonga <laughs> yeah it's phenomenal and the food I didn't even talk about the food anyway it's just really awesome so yeah, yeah. don't just think whales when you think Tonga That's absolutely it. next up Next up, um, Tonga is an island or as an island nation of around 170 different islands. So exploring this country does require quite a lot of planning in terms of 
um, island hopping, getting between the different island groups. So the main ways to get between the island groups, which are, there, there are um, five main island groups. There's Tonga Tapu, there's Eowa, Hapai, Vavau, and Neowa. Which is the one I didn't mention before. Loa is like proudly showing up right here. <laughs> But yeah, the Neowas are so far away from the rest of the island groups. They're actually closer to Samoa than they are to uh, the, the main island of Tonga Tapu in, uh, in Tonga. So yeah, getting around does require some, some planning. So there is the, uh, the local airline, which is obviously the fastest way to get between yep. island groups. Um, and that's quite an experience. You'll be going on uh, a mix of medium to s very small planes. So it's really a, it's really fun experience. Is it really medium? I think it's small or very small. Small or very small. <laughs> accurately. Um, also, there are ferry services um, going between the islands. Between Eowa and Tongatapu is perhaps the easiest yep. two islands to get to by ferry. And they have three different ferries. So you do have lots of options throughout the week. Um, and then you will have some longer ferry journeys, usually about eight hours to get to Hapai and between Hapai and Tongatapu. And then overnight ferry to get to Tongatapu to Babao. So yeah, they're longer, they're, they're very reasonably, reasonably priced and obviously cheaper than taking a flight. Um, but yeah, you do have options for island hopping, which is a re really a, definitely something worth extending your trip for, actually experiencing how different the island groups are from each other. Um, yeah. yeah, they each have a personality of their own, so it's worth experiencing at least a couple. Yes, absolutely. Next tip. All right, next tip. Um, Tonga has a lot of beautiful native species of animals and stunning wildlife, but it also has dogs and pigs <laughs> and chickens. I so, can, as, as you just said that, I heard some barking in the background. <laughs> <laughs> they knew we were talking about them. So, you will be awakened in the middle of the night by uh, pigs kind of rummaging around the bushes. It's normal, don't be afraid, that happens. <laughs> You will be awakened in the morning by the chickens, um, cacatooing as chicken cacatoos. Do they cacatoos? What's the what's the name for what the chicken does? Anyway, you'll be awakened by the chickens. It's normal. And if you are making your way around, you may be chased by dogs, either in your car or either on your bike or either when you're walking, right? So it shows on the paper like show selfie stick, which is what we're using to film this video so I won't be able to show it to you but have a stick with you and just kind of show a little bit the dogs um, they're not really that aggressive right as soon as you shoot them a little bit the way they go away and 90% of the dogs with encounter they mostly go on their back and ask for a belly rub um, but you know if you're a little bit like scared of dogs or anything like that just do be aware that's a thing um, and they quickly get distracted by the next chicken or the next big don't, don't panic too much about it but yeah have a stick especially if you're biking uh, speaking of the wildlife, yeah. next up, um, you actually have quite a lot of amazing marine wildlife. Does any of the marine to... wildlife cockatoos? <laughs> no, they no. go blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, So yeah, snorkeling is a really cool thing to do in Tonga. Uh, to get to the best snorkeling spots, it's generally advised to take a boat tour. So taking one of the boat tours, especially outside of the whale season. So during the whale season, you'll find that a lot of boat tours are just doing sort of whale watching. Um, but if you're going outside of the whale season, then you have the opportunity to see some of the amazing, amazing snorkeling spots. Lots of beautiful coral, starfish, amazing coral array fish. of colorful tropical fish. So, uh, some really small reef sharks, turtles. We've seen turtles as well. So yeah, the snorkeling here is really phenomenal. Phen phen phenomenal. Phenomenally phenomenal. And um, so do make sure that you have, uh, you know, if you have your own snorkeling gear, make sure you bring that with you. Um, and is there anything I'm forgetting for that? I don't think so. No. no. All right. So next tip, uh, we do like to kind of prepare you for the local etiquette here. So we have so many tips on TongaPocketGuide.com if you want to check it out. But um, let's say you happen to be invited by one of the locals, should it be one of your guide of the day or even your driver or, or, or somebody. Um, and let's say they invite you to have dinner with them and with their family. That's a fantastic experience. You usually be served a, a large pig roasted, a roasted pig with some taro and some other awesome delicacies. Um, but you may not be prepared for how that is um, served. So first up, uh, when you come in, it's customary to bring a gift, right? So either bring like a couple of big tub of ice cream for the kids. Uh, every family is riddled with a lot of kids. Um, 
why you we don't, we don't well, you say it's, 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 it's full of kids <laughs> they're full of kids right so that's great um so yeah so um so yeah bring bring a bunch of ice cream or um you know do make sure that you leave at least about 50 pangas per person like you know um on the table or something or just hide it under the plate or something like they're always going to do the dance i'm like no 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 but it's customary to bring a gift so so do that um, but um, yeah, so while the food is prepared, you know, you'd be able to play with the kids and everything, which is really cool. Like I played, what was the name of that weird game that we played? That was remember, so cool. But yeah, there was like... I had to run after a ball way too much and then they, they were hitting me with the ball and I, I think they, they made up the game just for me. Yeah, you can also, if you are if you are invited to do um, a Sunday, Sunday lunch, yeah. uh, an umu with a local family, you can often watch them prepare the yeah. And the help actually. And help out. So that's, that's quite a cool um, thing to do as well but yeah but when they actually serve you the food so it's customary in Tonga to actually and even if it's their own family because we've experienced that going with some family members we know here visiting some relative of themselves in other island group right? so we've seen that happening with locals as well they will actually serve their guests first and offered in a separate room. So you eat on your own with, for example, let's say it's just Laura and I being invited. It would very often be just Laura and I eating by ourselves kind of in the room with the food, all the food like laid out for, you know, food for like 20 people, right? Like really a lot of food. You're not expected to eat it yeah. all. Yeah, you're not expected to eat it all first up. But yeah, so you eat there and then when that's finished, they will take what's left and they will eat it themselves. And then you kind of recover in afterwards together. That's kind of what the custom is here. So don't feel too embarrassed. So don't care like force. I'm like, no, come here, come here. It's, it's just, it's just not what happens there um, also quite often um, the food is served without kind of the utensils so you use the utensils to kind of cut the pieces of pork and everything like that and then you kind of you eat with your hands that's what it is um, and that's kind of normal so here you go okay speaking of food um, we can go over what sort of food you can expect in Tonga when you're traveling around and we can touch a little bit on the water. So um, do you want to do water first since you got it in your hand? I can do water first if you want. So okay. the water in Tonga is, uh, well, it's safe to drink for Tongans, but not necessarily safe to drink for Palangis bellies. Uh, Palangis bellies. <laughs> um, so yeah, so for white people's bellies, uh, usually you may get, you know, you may get a bit sick if you drink local waters. So um, you have a couple of options. You can either spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds on um, bottled water or you can use filtration system like this one we are not paid by this company by the way but uh, yeah so for example live straw they will this is a bottle you buy for about 50 bucks and uh, it comes with one filter and then you replace the filter and with three months of use which is definitely not going to be the time you're in Tonga but uh, three months of use you replace the filter for about 20 bucks uh, with that we have filled up this bottle of water actually throughout the Pacific not just Tonga every country we cover because you guys know we cover Samoa, Tonga, uh, Nure, Kukai and etc fiji and all that and uh, we've used this everywhere across the pacific and we never ever got sick so yeah um, you can refill it any tap of water or any kind of barrel sometimes you have water that's kind of like how we, we just scoop the water and be done with it um so yeah so do make sure that you are prepared uh for uh the drinking uh, water and yeah we recommend using that because that will genuinely save you a lot of money on top of saving a lot of plastic because bottled water companies are inherently evil that's my reply to you guys next up food yes for food <laughs> so what can you expect in restaurants so most restaurants will have basically what i more considered staples here in togo which is burgers pizzas those fried chickens fried chicken and pasta we've yeah. seen a lot of pasta yeah actually yeah. Lots seen of creamy, a lot of pasta creamy pasta so you'll always you almost always find those items on the menu of any restaurant but um there's always opportunity to be a bit more you know uh, adventurous with your meals a lot of restaurants will have the local food like otta ika which is um raw fish marinated in coconut cream with a few spices in there as well so that's definitely worth trying usually as an entree um but you will find especially in the markets or the roadside stalls that we've talked about there are food like fai kakai which is really nice um cassava with sort of sweet coating on it that's my favorite speaking of fai kakai there's something called fai kava which is the uh, night where, where the boys are drinking kava 
it goes like you know tourists can go there as well if you want to if you happen to be back that I realized I forgot yeah. uh, bring uh, either 50 bucks per person or bring a pack of kava that you can buy at the local shop yes um, so yeah there, and then maybe some other food that you can try is loo which is um, which is coconut cream and some sort of meat uh, wrapped in a taro leaf so that, that's a different thing to try as well in uh, in Tonga so yeah there's there's opportunity to try local food particularly you know sold by locals at markets at roadside stalls but then when you get to restaurants you're more likely to have more international more sort of american or european style food but then you will also find in the larger towns there may be the odd um especially in nukualofa which is the capital of tonga you'll find your vietnamese restaurant your korean restaurant that sort of thing so you can find some international foods that way as well but only really in the um in nukualofa However, when you get to Ewa, really not many options there. At the time of recording this video, there's only two places that tourists can go for food outside of their accommodation. Usually accommodations where there are no other, there's no other choice of restaurants. Accommodations will provide meals, perhaps there'll be an extra fee or included. Make sure you inquire before you book. Um, and then on Hapai, you have maybe about five different restaurant yeah. options so and um, at the time of recording this video so uh be just be aware that on those more you know remote island groups you'll have less options for restaurants so be happy with the meal served at your accommodation and uh if you are planning on staying in like local guest houses or accommodation that don't have uh like a restaurant or anything like that uh, plan for Sundays, so just go to the local kind of little shop, the little supermarket, and get yourself like a pack of biscuits or something. Have, have a snack at the ready, otherwise you may be starving on the Sunday. You won't be starving, but you know. Also very important is for those with dietary requirements, oh, yeah. if you're staying at accommodation that is is providing any food for you, Make sure you let them know your dietary requirements well in advance because they may well have to get thing, you know, certain ingredients shipped in. You may be advised to actually bring some ingredients that they can't. Yeah, if you need to do like gluten-free or everything like that, you will have to bring some of the bases, uh, yeah. some of the staples uh, of this kind of diet. Diet. Or again, you have to be open-minded. That's one of the points I was hammering quite a lot. And you may be like, okay, I'm traveling to Tonga. I'm going to eat like a Tongan for like my two weeks. And uh, I'll get back to my normal diet when I get back home just because the availability of option is significantly lower. Yeah, but well, we do have guides on tongapocketguide.com yeah. for, uh, you know, those with gluten-free diets or those who are vegan or vegetarian. You'll be able to find some more information and recommendations there. All right, so next up on our list um, is the fact that quite often you're going to hear the word EO every time you ask stuff. So EO means yes in Tongan. And so really often Tongas are, are very nice and very, they always try to please, right? So you're going to ask, uh, hey, am I taking the next, uh, at the next interaction, am I really going left? And they're going to say, EO, EO. Double confirm that information because you needed to go right or you needed to go straight, right? So you hear yes, 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 quite often, but then check that information. Sometimes when it's kind of like, is lunch included? EO, EO. Uh, just double check, make sure that you understand. Like, so you will give me a full meal when I'm coming with you on the boat? And they were like, oh, no, no, just, just a coconut. So it's kind of like, okay, I'm going to pack myself a sandwich. Just those kind of things, right? So always confirm the information. So um, we call that like fact checking or just kind of like, you know, yeah. oh, no, what do I say? Oh, I say, let me just reformulate that just so I understand correctly because I don't want, you know, I, I don't want to be insulting or anything like that. So, you know, and I spot a beautiful French accent, which is really helpful for that. And I'm just always saying like, just, just so I'm not getting it wrong. Um, is that included in there or you know check for example our website where we always kind of talk about the inclusion of what's included in tools and all those kind of things because yeah. so that's what we do for a living right we hear all the time and we always kind of research we talk to every operators and all that so do make sure that you check uh, every information you get every every stuff like are you open uh, every day here so you open on sunday oh no okay well then i cannot come here for lunch on sunday then okay no that's cool you know that's really important to um that's really important to check that so like that you don't have any point of frustration later on in your trip all right another maybe point of eel, no, or... <laughs> probably another point of frustration for some um would be that you know tonga sort of works at its own pace very relaxed um if you uh, you know there's no 
schedules that are really stuck to quite stringently here. Perhaps yep. taking your boat tour in the morning, being there on time is just, uh, or being on time for your flight is perhaps the yep. most um, important timings there. But when you're taking the ferry, for instance, or you know you're, you've planned um, planned something with like maybe a locals going to come pick you up from somewhere, or you're meeting. Or your someone. your hired driver may show up a half an hour, an hour late. Yeah, it happens. Or, or you know, or if you ask someone, how long is this going to take for me to do this? The the concept of like how long something's going to take isn't usually too accurate. Yeah, <laughs> something is. Let's say sometimes. I mean, yesterday we were right in Papa and went to the beautiful uh, Eneo Botanic Garden, and the lady was there 15 minutes early and because of the people that we're going around with we were there 45 they minutes late they were on Tonga time exactly <laughs> they were on Tonga time she was on Palangi time and so therefore there was a bit of a clash and then she went back home and those, then we had to go back to her place she had to change again and go back to there so yeah, um, yeah. most of the time what, what I always say I, I always approach things, approach things with an open mind so I'm always there on time but I'm prepared for waiting, so I yeah. pack some games. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, be prepared for if there is a way to just have something to do. Make pack sure card that, games. Yeah, have, pack, pack some a card game, a travel game, or whatever. Um, we have some videos on the channel with uh, with our favorite travel games. Yeah, make sure you have plenty of water with you, and all you know, you have re refreshments or whatever available if you have to wait a little while. And yeah, just. Um, it's better for you to sort of stick to a plan, but don't be disappointed if other people aren't sticking exactly to a plan. All right, last point on this uh, on, on this uh, this list that we have is about car rental. So car rental in Tonga is kind of a big thing. Like everybody kind of rents car. Even locals actually quite often rent mm. cars because they they just don't buy cars for themselves. However, note that there is no insurance. So here's how it works. Um, let's say the fee is 100 pangas per day. You're going to arrive at the place and you're going to rent the car and you're going to pay for how many days you're going to get. So let's say 200 pangas for two days. You're also going to give their bonds of between 200 pangas and 500 pangas. Usually it's always kind of, it's most of the time it's 200, yeah. So you're going to give them the bond and that's pretty much it. You're going to drive the car around and if you happen to have an accident, then you're going to negotiate with the car rental company on how much it costs to um, to do the repairs and you have to pay for it. That's kind of how it works. Now that said, um, you know, accidents are very rare, drive safely and all that. So uh, we haven't encountered anyone that actually had issues with that, but we've encountered a lot of people that were scared about that and therefore chose other options. If you're scared, again, go back to the one of my previous points and hire a safe driver, make it easier for yourself. But other than that, just do be aware. Don't kind of like keep on. No, basically, don't go around until you find somebody with insurance because you kind of want. It's I think very hard to find. I think there's yeah. only one company that has that, and man, they're expensive. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah do be aware of that. Um, car rental is still a very valid option, despite the fact that insurances are not an option. Exactly. All right. So that's pretty much it for us today at TongaPocketGuide.com. Again, Tonga features some of the most pristine landscape of the entire South Pacific, some of the most epic activities to do in all of the South Pacific. But we feel that kind of understanding all those um, um, often unknown points of friction is critical uh, for your enjoyment of the country. So we hope that this video was super useful. We have and I'm not, it's not a figure of speech. We genuinely have hundreds more tips for you on TongaPocketGuide.com. So check it out. Get plenty of advice for you. And we wish you an absolute blast in Tonga. How do you say goodbye? I was just thinking about that. Au far too.